if I saw there's going to be some new documentary, whatever it is, about Stephen Lawrence, you know the guy that was killed in a, I'm not going to say supposed, I'm pretty sure it was absolutely confirmed that it was a racist killing back in what, 1994? 30 years ago? They're making another documentary about it. The mother's coming out again, the father's coming out again, the ex-lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And what is funny is, I know more about this case from 30 years ago about a man that was stabbed in London or wherever it was, than I know about, for example, the guy, Lee Rigby, who died 10 years ago. I don't even know how he was killed. And he was, he wasn't just some random guy, wasn't he, you know, military or something? So that's what I mean, or something, I have no idea about this guy. I know his name, I know he was killed, I know it was by a group of, you know, non-British people, I don't know if they're Muslim, Hindu, I have no idea. I don't even know these guys. I mean, I was told by my mum uh, recently, in Glasgow or something, where I, my city, I suppose you're some guy, some football fan, uh, again, I don't know, he's a football fan, whatever, uh, he was put into a car, like kidnapped by a group of Muslims, Pakistan, whatever it was, I don't know, a group of Muslims, and he was set on fire and killed. He was set on fire. That's probably the worst way you could go out. That's probably the worst way to die, humanly possible. We hear about all these things, but it never makes the news, really. Nobody ever really cares. And what I found worse is it's actually, dare I say it, systemic racism towards white people. Because it's disproportionate. The fact that there was one killing, one racist killing, and it's, I've been made to watch a documentary about it in school. I had to watch about this guy that was killed by police uh, in Scotland, some black guy, I think it was in somewhere in Fife or something, I, I, I think. He was basically, bunch of police officers. But I mean, this was like a, basically like a George Floyd. But actually, no, not as bad, I don't think. The guy was high on drugs, holding a knife. So the police, the police come, there's a man with a knife. And what happens? They actually hit him, and he keeps trying to fight back with the police. You can see there's a whole video of it. I think he's just, I think he's tried to pull a knife on a police officer, actually. I'm pretty sure he pulled a knife on a police officer. Or he threatened to pull the knife on the police officer or something. But or he walked up with his hand. The police officer hits him. All the police officers get on him. They're hitting him wherever. He dies. And there's a whole investigation. Taxpayer money probably goes to it. There's a whole big deal. I've watched it. I've watched a whole documentary in school about that. I've watched a whole documentary in school about Stephen Lawrence. But I don't know a single thing, barely, about the these other people these white people that are killed by and by the way the, the fact that there was two deaths of of these people and two deaths i can name of another one yet the fact that there's actually more uh, it's crazy right so it's actually tech because imagine this was the other way around we only learned about the black about white people and black people were underrepresented they, they were not being taught about in school about the racist killings of black people and they were only doing it on white people Despite it being more proportional, because there is more white people, so it makes sense there's more deaths of the other way. So, if that was that way, you'd be like, oh, you're, you're hiding the fact that black people are dying. There'd be this whole thing of schools aren't showing the, the racist killings on black people. The school, there's, this is systemic racism. Silence is violence. That's what they'd use. I've not watched a single documentary on an anti-white attack in the country. Not a single one in school, but two on two black people. Who, which one of them was a danger to life? The other guy's team, I'm sure he's a nice guy, I'm sure he deserves justice, I'm sure the family deserves justice. Racist attack, maybe there was some corruption in, this, in the field. But there's also corruption in the field of this other one, because the police officers have been framed that it was a racist attack, despite being no evidence. When there's a drugged out man that keeps resisting after you've hit him with a bat, he's got a knife on him, someone's called saying he's got a knife. What, you're not going to hit him? Because this is just an example of police violence. When there's, a, when there's a man on drugs, high off cocaine, with a knife, are you really not going to hit him? As a police officer, you're going to forget this whole, I have to shout taser before I hit him with the taser. I have to shout, I'm going to hit him before I hit him with the bat, uh, with the baton. It's, th that all goes out the window. There's adrenaline rushing. There's a crazy, drugged out man with a knife. Protect yourself. They're not even thinking, oh, I need to, I need to protect the society. I need to protect, protect the village. They're just thinking, I could get stabbed here. Boom, hit him. Get him out. That's how you should treat these people. But it's been framed as a big racist attack. And there's silence on everything else. Think about all the, Ameri the, the white Americans killed by, you know, black people in America. 
is completely disproportionate, by the way. There's like eight times more black on white, at least in the police department, police killing, uh, white police officers killing black civilians, and then black civilians killing police officers. It's like eight times more black, black uh, civilians killing police officers than white police officers killing... And the black, the black, the black people are killing the black police officers too. It's not, they don't even just kill them. They just kill them all the police. Silence. There's nothing about it. No racism, racism, racism. But the second is the other way around. There's protests and riots. It's totally unfair. So I say it's systemic racism. We could sit here and say silence is violence. Why isn't my school teaching about you know the actual heroes that have been killed? By the other way around. This doesn't have to. I'm not. I'm not saying this because I want these people to be framed in a negative light. Unlike how they, they want to frame white people in a bad light. I'm not saying this. I just want to be equal. Where, why haven't... You know, that Lee Ripley guy, he, he was essentially a hero. He, was he not a war veteran? Was he not... All these, all these things. Surely if he was being killed, that'd be tragic. Surely we'd have to learn about that. It's the same with the slavery. It's, oh, the European slave trade with... No, 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 the North Atlantic, wherever it was. From Africa to America. What about all the other slaves? It's always, oh, us bad, white people bad, colonialism... Uh, black people good and victims. Why why are we never learning about the slavery of white people? This isn't because I want white people to be seen as victims and helped out. This is just because where's the equal proportion? Why are we always framed as the bad guys? Why is it because look, people aren't sitting there on Google searching up the statistics. They don't they don't watch this documentary on the racist killing on black people and go, Okay, let me look at the facts. Let me look how many black people have killed white people, how many white people have killed black and then doing the whole math to see is it proportionate? They're not doing that. They're seeing documentary must have been made, so it must never happen the other way around because it just you know surely they make documentaries and that too. So maybe the only racism is white to black. Maybe it's only white to Muslim. Maybe uh, whatever. Yeah, there are victims. We are the oppressors. We're the bad guys all the time. Whatever, whatever. That's how they see us. They don't look at the statistics because nobody doesn't. Nobody cares about the statistics. People just see it at things at face value. They made a documentary and him. Never see a documentary the other way around. So that means it must not happen. That's how people see it. It's a sad case, especially when you're teaching it to children in schools. There's nothing wrong with these documentaries. With the Stephen Lawrence one, fine. You can, you can put it on TV. He deserves justice. The family deserves justice. All this stuff. You can put it on there. But where's it the other way around? Why are you silent on it? Why is there no documentaries? Why don't you care? Why don't you care when a hero was murdered? Why don't you care? Where is the big documentary expose Muslim grooming gangs? Oh, this rape happened. Oh, another one happened. Oh, another bombing. Oh, another murder. Another stabbing children. Why, where's the documentaries? Because it's clear you just don't care. Because when it happens the other way around, it's, yes, let's get on in this. Let, let's put all the money into it. Let's get recorded immediately. Put it on TV now. Second zero, we are, no, 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 don't care. Whatever. It doesn't matter. That's how, that's, that's how it really is. Because where's the outrage? Where's the mainstream media? Hop it on that. Oh, I'd get a good story from this. They don't even care about getting a good story. They don't even care about the clicks. They just care about, you know, influencing public opinion. It's nothing to do with profits. Because trust me, if they put it the other way around, more people would click on it, probably. But they don't care about people clicking on it. They just care about manufacturing the public opinion to, you know, shaping their propaganda perfectly to try and shift everyone's beliefs. And brainwash everyone. So the hypocrisy, I, I, sometimes silence is violence. When, if it was silence on both sides, there's no documentaries about the, the white racist killings on black people, there's no documentaries about either, I wouldn't say silence is violence. But when you show kids in school, every single kid, two documentaries on white or black, but not on black and white, or not on brown and white, whatever it is, well that kind of is silence is violence. Because this is, this is Britain. Surely it should be the other way around. I wouldn't even, you know, but the fact that it's never showing the white people, I, I'd say silence is violence in that case. Or maybe not violence, you know, but the little quote of, you know, your it's systemic racism, all of this stuff. I'd say it is, because why don't you care? Why, why don't you want to teach us about that? What's your issue with that? Why do you only care when it's the other way around? Because quite frankly, the other way around doesn't really impact most of us anyway. So why is it as, why is it as, as important? The, their lives are just as important, but why is it just as important to... You know, only show that that side of the story. That well, not not that side of the story, but why is it only? Why does it only matter to show us that side? Because that impacts less of us. So surely it would make more sense to spread awareness about the thing that will impact more kids as they grow older. Doesn't make sense. So I'd say in the schools, systemic racism does exist. That's how I feel about that. That's what I'm seeing with my own eyes and ears. 
as, as my experience as a secondary school pupil in the year 2024, that's exactly what I'm seeing. 